Well, hello there. What do we have? Ah, we have a picture of Mr. Charles Darwin. A uh, portrait, actually, made uh, toward the end of his life. Here's a portrait made much earlier in his life. And so we know uh, from the intro that Mr. Darwin was born on exactly the same day as a famous American. Which famous American? This famous American, born exactly the same day as Mr. Lincoln. Different part of the world, different means. Uh, Mr. Darwin was born uh, into a wealthy doctor's family, and so was well-to-do. Uh, didn't hurt a bit that he married into another wealthy family. He married Emma Wedgwood, his first cousin. Ooh, problems there, but they didn't uh, understand genetics back then, and so uh, that was uh, not considered a big deal. But Emma Wedgwood was uh, his uh, bride was from a famous pottery family. Here's an example of Wedgwood pottery, and that uh, still going strong today. That blue color is a famous color called Wedgwood blue. So, uh, but that's getting ahead of our story. Where was Mr. Darwin born? He was born in Shrewsbury. And uh, so, what do we have here? We have a map of southern England. Here's London. And then northwest of London, there is the city of Shrewsbury, where Mr. Darwin was born. The distance between the two, 161 miles or so. It takes only 2 hours and 58 minutes to get from London to Shrewsbury. Hmm, you suppose that's how long it took in Darwin's day? In a horse and carriage? I don't think so. Probably a multi-day trip. If you're going from Shrewsbury to London, you probably stopped along the way at the various inns. Took a few days to get from uh, Shrewsbury to London. That's where Mr. Darwin was born. Uh, and so Mr. Darwin, as we, uh, his father, as we said, was a wealthy doctor. He could afford to send uh, Darwin any school uh, that he wanted to, and uh, we're talking about not where young Charles Darwin wanted to, where Papa Darwin wanted to send him. And so uh, Charles's father's first idea is, my son's going to be a doctor, just like me. Send him to uh, medical training. Charles didn't do well. He wasn't interested in medical training. So uh, his father said, well, maybe, he, uh, maybe he'll be a minister then. And so he sent him to the University of Cambridge, for theological training. Charles was an interested in theological training, even though he did get a degree. He did pass his test. He got his degree, but he spent a whole lot more of his time uh, developing his skills as a naturalist. Uh, he was very interested in nature, uh, collecting things uh, and so forth, and he made contacts at Cambridge. Scientists who were well known, who were also experts, so were naturalist experts in their field. And one of those contacts led to a job offer, offer a job offer that made uh, Papa Darwin very upset. Uh, the offer was for young Charles to be the ship's naturalist on a journey around the world. It was supposed to take two long years. Well, it ended up taking five. They didn't know it was going to take five, but it uh, even at two years. Uh, Darwin's father thought that would be an incredible waste of time. But he was finally persuaded by some of Darwin's mentors, some of the scientists in London, to let Charles go. And so Charles started around the world in a journey that ended up being five years long. And I uh, said, wow, sailing ships are pretty slow back then. Why? How, how come it took so long? Well, you know, a good sailing ship could make it around the world in less than a year. So why are the five years? Well, Captain Fitzroy had been hired by somebody to map, explore, survey uh, various places that weren't very well known. And so it was a very slow trip of exploration. And, uh, and the name of the ship was what? The HMS Beagle. This is a replica, a very small boat. It rocked and rolled in the ocean. And Darwin was perpetually sick through all the time at sea, he was sick as he could be with seasickness. It apparently never let up for the entire five years. But what would Mr. Charles do uh, to earn his keep? Well, um, when uh, Captain Fitzroy uh, maybe stopped right here, he might say to Charles, uh, well, Charlie, uh, we're going to be here a couple weeks. It's going to take me a little while to map this harbor. And so uh, why don't you go ashore and do your thing? So uh, Mr. Charles would take a boat, go ashore, 
and start doing his thing. What was his thing? Well, he was a, he was hired to be the ship's naturalist. He would study. He would take notes. He would uh, take collections. He would collect uh, plants and bugs and animals of various kinds, and also geological collections and so forth. And so he started piling up notebook after notebook of information, and uh, he uh, started accumulating truckfuls of collections of preserved animals and plants and geological specimens and so forth, and he would ship those when he could back to England. So how would he do that? Well, they might be in a port where there was another ship or two or three, and they'd find out one of those ships was going back to, uh, going back to uh, England, to London, and so they'd say, hey, can we pay you to take this trunk to so-and-so? And so they would. And they even got mail when they're on this journey. The, uh, you say, mail? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I think it is kind of amazing. But the uh, folks back in uh, London, Darwin's mentors, would send letters on ahead to ports that they thought the Beagle would stop at. And so, uh, and so Darwin got mail from time to time, and his mentors would say, doing a great job, Charlie. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. Keep those collections coming. And so he was encouraged. Even though he was very discouraged that the trip was taking so long, uh, he was encouraged by the fact that his collections were being well received. One famous place that he went to was called the Galapagos Islands, now famous. Not famous then, uh, famous now. We'll talk more about them a little later in the module, but they're about 600 miles west of the coast of uh, South America. Here's a map of the Galapagos. We'll take a little, a little bit closer look at that later. And, uh, and so... Uh, the Galapagos were named how? Why were they called the Galapagos? They're named after their most famous resident, that being uh, this uh, very large, large, large tortoise, big guy. And uh, so uh, I think maybe some of you may have seen some at the uh, zoo, the Oklahoma City Zoo. They are huge. And uh, so uh, another uh, famous, now famous resident of the Galapagos were these finches. They're now called Darwin's Finches for reasons we'll talk about later. All right, so the journey continued, finally ended in 1836. Uh, Darwin was how old then? Still pretty young. He started the trip at age 22, got done five years later, age what? Age 27. And so he uh, settled into a comfortable life in London, hobnobbing with a scientist and other naturalists of the day, and he started writing books about his trip and they were very well received. Uh, people were very instant, you know, they didn't have the discovery back then, National Geographic, and so they relied on people who uh, actually took trips like Mr. Darwin did to come back and report uh, what they had seen uh, around the world. So he wrote books. He was also formulating his ideas about evolution very, very gradually. And so, um, and so at uh, some point, uh, he settled into a home in Down, England. Now, where's Down? Well, it's a lot closer to London than Shrewsbury was in the opposite direction, southeast of London. Here's London again. Here's uh, Down, D-O-W-N-E. And uh, it says up here about 18 miles uh, between the two, about 48 minutes. <laughs> well, probably back in Darwin's day, a good day's journey uh, by horse and buggy between, uh, between the two. But that's where Darwin lived as an adult. He bought a beautiful home called the Down House which has been preserved as a museum now. His uh, study is, uh, is still the way that he last worked in it. Here's another picture of his study. Uh, and so uh, he worked, wrote it. He did a lot of research, a lot of writing, and a lot of things. But he was gradually forming his ideas about evolution. And he finally published those ideas in this book right here, which is the same as this book right here. And so uh, when did this book get published? Hmm, 18 what? 1859. 1859? Wow, that was an awfully long time after Mr. Darwin got back from his little trip. Uh, how long? Well, about uh, 23 years later. Got another 36, 46, 56, 59. 23 years later. How old was Mr. Darwin when this book was published? Let's see, born 1809, 1859. Hmm, not too hard to figure that out. He was about 50 years old. My goodness, how come it took him so long to publish? Well, first of all, he was formulating his ideas, 
Secondly, he knew they wouldn't be too popular. The fact is, he was, some of his mentors would probably have uh, uh, not received them very well. Some of his colleagues that he, uh, he wanted to keep their respect, but he was finally forced to by uh, the arrival of a communication from someone named Alfred Russell Wallace. There's a little section in your book about Mr. Wallace, but it looked like, uh, wow, Mr. Wallace had come up all of a sudden with ideas that Darwin had been working on for years. And so uh, Darwin, uh, uh, boy, he was about to be preempted. So his friends say, get your books out, get your book out, get your book out. And so he did. And uh, he published the book, uh, The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection. So we're going to learn a little bit about some of the ideas that Mr. Darwin had uh, as we continue this module. But that concludes the introduction.